Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to this mini-sode, mini-sode of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. I am Brandon Luna. I'm Randy Rankin. And I am Cigar Deep Nate. And today we're reviewing something that Nate cannot say the name of, so I will say it. It is the Latelier <laughs> Extension. Bam. Latelier Extension de la Racine ER13. Okay, that's too long of a name for a cigar. Sorry, too long. Now, what it is, is... Now, now we're done with the mini sub because you had to say that name. It took that long. <laughs> and we're done. done. So the first third, we'll be back for the second third. The <laughs> Atelier <laughs> Extension de la Racine <sighs> ER13. Damn it, there goes the second third. That sounds like, that sounds like a playbook, an NFL playbook. Like, that's what their quarterbacks sounds tell like in the a name, play. It's, it's as long as the names of the Hobbit movies or whatever. Yeah. It's like just, you know, this... Have you ever heard an NFL play the called... Hobbit Desolation of Smaug. What? Have you ever heard an NFL play called, like, when you hear the quarterback in the huddle and they mic him, it's like, XR... 14 xy 3 4 2 and you're like what the fuck it's all this shit that's what the cigar sounds like <laughs> what the fuck is all this shit it should be with the cigar's name should just be this is the bobby <laughs> this is the bob <laughs> bab we call this cigar bab we'll smoke right. we'll smoke so the bob what are the deets on this cigar deep nate to get back on track all right no i like it when we're off track go ahead <laughs> It is a uh, Nicaraguan cigar. Uh, the wrapper is Nicaraguan Sun Grown Criollo. Uh, binder is Nicaraguan. Filler is Nicaraguan. It is a 5 and 7 eighths by 52, which is... Uh, wait, is that what this one? No, that's not what this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so these, that's not 5 and 7 You're not smoking what we're smoking. I am not smoking what you're smoking. He is smoking a Viaje Zombie Super Shot, and it's which I gave him. Awesome. Yeah, it's we'll very strong. Still too long of a name, but okay. <laughs> And by the way, they must not care about counterfeiting on this one because I just barely touched it and Obviously, fell off. And it definitely didn't destroy the You're wrapper right. altogether. Did you get into the deets of the what it's made of? Yeah, blast it. It took less time than saying the name of the okay. cigar. He gave okay. the deets. So this, the reason that this is a special cigar is that you had to purchase this at the IPCPR show last year in order to carry it. Mm -hmm. If you didn't purchase it then, you don't carry it. Now, they did release it just recently before this year's IPCPR because they're trying to get some momentum on the new version of it. They're coming out with an extension on the line, so I don't know what the one? I don't know what the new one's going to be called. But um, the Latalia Extension de la Racine ER thirteen point two Pi carry the one yeah something like that. We're gonna go with that yeah. But um, so it is it is kind of a rare. It was rare for a while, uh, but this has basically about a year on it. So okay, cool. So, yeah. And I'm gonna have to deband because all I did was touch it. Yeah, and you fell just off. barely touched the band, and it's like poop. It just popped right off. I'm gonna cut with our Monte Cristo cigar scissor donated to us by Alta de USA and everyone. The great Eddie, Eddie Gavito. Gavito. Thank you, Eddie and Alta de USA. It's a pretty band. It's a nice red band. It's very red. Kind of reminds me of the uh, acid bands a little bit. Is it bit considered a risotto? It has a risotto like color to it. I don't know. You do know that risotto is a color. It's yeah, not an actual yeah, wrapper. Yeah. A lot of people think it's a risotto wrapper. No, risotto means the color. It is very rosy. It's sun grown. I think that's what makes it that's look what rosy. Gives it its color. Could be. Could be. I can try All the right, cold so draw. Cold draw. Uh, at first, it didn't feel open, but then the second puff, it felt wide open. Mm -hmm. Block. Sweet. Sweet yeah, to me. Hint of sweetness. I'm not getting any spice pre-light. It's a, it's a woody, woodsy note. Woodsy spice. Woodsy sweet. Sweet wood. Sweet it's like wood. sweet wood in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's giggling over here. Oh, oh man. She said. <laughs> I get there's a commercial now that makes fun of people that say, tell that's what she said jokes, and I don't. I, fuck that's them. A stupid fucking commercial. I agree fuck with that. Guys. What I commercial agree. is that for? We what was it for? I don't know. I I got pissed when he said. He's the kind of guy that tells that's what she said jokes. I'm like, really? It's a product I'm not buying. Exactly. Hey, was it said from uh, Sam Elliott, though? He's the kind of guy that says that's no. what she said No, because if no. he said it, then he'd have to be like, oh, shit, i got to quit saying that. No, it, it, was, it was some smarmy asshole. Oh, yeah. Okay, when I was growing up in the 80s, and it's, you, you grew up in the 80s, too, that's when that's what she said got really popular. Mm -hmm. And then it died. And... Max wife being older than me, she didn't live through the that's what she said generation. I mean, she lived through it, but she wasn't a part of the culture then. And uh, first episode of The Office where he said that's what she said, I was like, what? <laughs> I hadn't heard that in years. And my wife's like, I don't get it. And so I had to explain it to her. And then she laughed. She was like, that's funny. And she would love it every time you'd say it after that. And so that's why I say it because The Office made it cool again because they kind of made it cool inferring that it's not cool. But that's, Michael thinks it's cool and that's what's funny. So I will continue to say that's what she said. All right. 
Good to know. It is. What do you think of the first thing? The first couple of puffs there. I'm not getting anything right now. I'm just that little woody, little sweet, little sweet. Not really as sweet as the cold draw was. The cold draw is sweeter than the actual draw on it. But I'm getting kind of a cinnamony note, especially on the retro hill. I could see that. I'm not getting it, but I could see that where you would get that. It's like that when you when you take like say you have cinnamon toast and you take a bite of cinnamon toast and there's still like a lot of cinnamon on there and it goes through your nose. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's like okay. the powdery cinnamon. -y. Cinnamon challenge on toast. Oh God, I've never. I will never ever do the cinnamon challenge ever. Have you ever? It's not that bad. You ever? I mean, it's the worst thing in the world, but it's not. That bad. <laughs> it's ever, the worst thing in the world, but it's not. That you ever bad. done that? Where you like put cinnamon oil on your lip and it burns? Oh yeah. Like hell. Remember the, the cinnamon when we were speaking of eighties? Yeah. The cinnamon toothpicks. Yeah. Ooh, I freaking those loved those. I loved those until I had so many of them in a row that my lips split. And I was like, yeah. oh, and it burns so okay. bad. At one point, I was a band nerd in junior high. Mm -hmm. I played trombone, and the, the tuba section was right behind us. <laughs> and this trombone. idiot. Seven, and this six bones led the big parade. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, so there's a... Damn, we did show tunes. Oh, wow. That's not good. Manitude will have no show tunes. <laughs> <laughs> show tune free zone. <laughs> but anyway, the tuba guy was like right behind me, and he would always like turn his bell to where it was like right in my ear. I was like, stop it. Like, aim that way. You know, it's, this kid pissed me off. Well, a friend of mine here he pours some cinnamon oil on my finger, and I didn't know what it was. He goes, rub that on your lips. And I'm like, okay. Ah! Hurt like <laughs> hell. So Todd, the tuba player, left his tuba sitting on the thing. I'm like, give me some of that stuff. And I rubbed it on his mouthpiece. Oh, <laughs> during, practice, wow. every, during practice, he'd be playing. He'd, he'd stop, and he'd be like going. <laughs> <laughs> the band director's like, Todd, you keep pulling out of the song. It's like, oh, my mouthpiece, man, it burns. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Fuck with the bull, you get the horn. No pun intended. <laughs> Actually, pun was intended. Oh, totally. Yeah, the pun was totally intended on that one, yeah. It's a little grassy. It Maybe is kind of grassy. For a, a year old, grassy. Yeah. for a year old, you'd figure the grass might have it's aged out. Still a little grassy, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the grass never ages off. You should know that by now. It's Actually, it should. It's pretty mild. mild. Yeah, it's pretty mild. Yeah, I'd say it's a uh, mild-ish. It at helps this if point. you're close to the mic, so people can actually hear what you're. They saying. can probably hear them still. People to hear those. What are you like? How, what are you thinking of that zombie super shot so far? Uh, it's 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 actually giving me a, a pretty significant headache in the top of my head. Yes. I don't like that at all. It is. Uh, <laughs> it it will give you the nickups if you if you puff on it too hard and too fast. Because you already said it's giving him a headache good. in the top of his head. Mm -hmm. So not yeah, like there's, different, there's different regions. This, you is can the, get a headache this is the region where you usually get your headaches. Right, which means I'm. This is this is you guys are hurting me. Okay, I didn't give it to you. I'm not hurting you at all. Don't don't retro hell. Retro hell. Dare you? No retro Double dog dare you? Oh and, shit! He just did. Oh, don't do that. You're Actually, gonna make it worse. Wild. I like that. That was cool. <laughs> that was nice. Nice. That yeah. was surprising. Yeah, those hey, are good. Those where are you? Nice. We don't see you on camera. It's in my face. No, but okay. you're, yeah. When it's not in your face, we don't see you on camera. Cigar deep need, isn't there? There he is. That's the point. Howdy ho. Howdy ho. Okay, I got it now. Want some water? <laughs> oh, I'm so risky. <laughs> yeah, drink whiskey instead and of we water. we are pairing with the Maker's Mark again. The excellent Maker's Mark. Mm -hmm. well, why do you say again? Because this, is, this, the, is, this the is the second only episode of the day. Today. I know, but this is the second episode of the day. They know we, we record multiple times. They know we, we yeah, pulled back done the that curtain. before. We oh pulled back God. the curtains all the time. We're 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 a curtain puller here. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> that really does sound bad. <laughs> it's kind of why I said it, but then when I said it, I wanted to reel it back in. But the but ash is okay. very very white. <laughs> um, the burn is not perfect. <laughs> well, the burn's a little jagged for me. Oh, how's your burn? Well, you're barely into yours. I don't remember ashing, so I must not be that far into it. Yeah, you're not that far. It's not that great a burn. It's a little off. It's tasty, but very mild. Tasty, but very mild. Tasty, but very, very mild. mild. Very surprising. Yeah. Because I had one of these right out the box um, rot, mm -hmm. and I have a quickie that I'd never put out mm -hmm. because I deleted the last third of the quickie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I was like, shit. Because you hated the cigar that much? No, I liked it. It just, I deleted the last third. It was the day that I went to, I did a couple quickies in a row at this one bar. Yeah. And um, I just was dumbass when I was putting stuff over to the computer and deleted the last there. I'm like, crap. And now i got to review it again. I'll just wait and review it with Randy. And <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it. I'll let Randy smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be cool. That sounds about like, yeah. like Brandon's thing. <laughs> Man, this sucks. Let's give it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> St. Cristobal. Never mind. <laughs> joking, joking. 
Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a mini so We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back for the second third of the... Fuck that. Latelier <laughs> Extension de la Racine. ER13. I got it. Point seven nice. five eight three four four two, two five. five. Carry the one. Carry the one. <laughs> <laughs> Minus seven. <laughs> All right, we're back for the second third of the L'Atelier Extension de la Racine ER13 longest cigar name ever. Are we still on that? <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Oh, God. It hey, reminds this... me of that song by B.J. Thomas. Hey, won't you play another somebody done somebody wrong song? It's like, good God, is that title ever going to end? Did they actually say the whole that's title the of the name song? Of the, that's the longest oh, no, title. When they introduced it on the radio. On the they... record. It yeah. says, hey, won't you play another somebody done somebody wrong song? It took up the whole fucking so, label. I think they would probably it's, just say, and now the new one from B.J. Thomas. Boom. <laughs> and uh, it holds the record for the longest title of a song that hit number one. Hmm. So there you go. Do they really need to add the caveat? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's a great song. That's a good drinking song. That was a great, yeah. It's a good great drinking song. song. Yeah. For it's sure. Like, sway and sing along with it. It's got mm-hmm. that catchy melody. Good song. Yep. We're showing our age. We're showing our age. <laughs> We're showing our age. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> we do that from time to time. Yeah, we do. Because we're old. Pretty fucking old. Yeah, we're yeah. old. Fucks. Four centuries. Fuck. Centuries? I'm about to be four. Wait, no, four and a half centuries. Four centuries. <laughs> four and and nodding. And went, decades. No? <laughs> decades. Four and a half. No, not half. I hope we live four and a half centuries. That'd be nice. That'd be, I don't want to live that long. <laughs> if we could stay where we are today. If we today. could stay where, yeah. Yeah. If my uh, research continues on where it's going, uh uh-huh. will. You will? We will. Huh? will. Okay. Is it going to be like a transcendence thing where we're living in computers, or is it going to be like real full, like an actual body? Uh, biomechanical stuff. Oh, okay. Like, like it's be bionic. Or are we going to be cryogenically frozen and then thawed out like an idiocracy, and the rest of the world's going to be stupid? No, you don't. You don't age when you're okay. frozen, though. So you'd still be four and a half decades old. That's what I'm saying. No, no but I'm, the rest I'm, of the world will have progressed, and they're like going to be Futurama stupid. I'm talking matter. about replacing body parts mm. uh, with machines, like like your genitals specifically. Okay. That would be bionic wiener. Bionic. Lee Majors, Steve Austin. Can can you do a spiral, like a drill? Six million dollar (laughs) penis. I imagine that was probably at least one million. Six million, I would think. You got to make that fucking glorious. If you're going to make a bionic man. (laughs) Otherwise, you waste it on the the bullet. Or how else would you get the bionic woman if you didn't have a bionic penis of of extraordinaire? Wow, this is a great conversation right now. (laughs) Yes, on the air, because that's what we do here. We froze. froze. Yeah, we froze. Yeah, we froze for a second. Oh, well. That happens. Thanks for turning my research into porn. Yeah, exactly. That shit happens, man. You're welcome. That's what we do here. That's what we do here. (laughs) So we were talking a little bit about about the past and the 80s and stuff and what what we did when we were growing up. I got a question for you, Randy. Mm-hmm. What was the weirdest job you had ever growing up as a kid? Because I think weirdest. probably pretty much the weird jobs are when you're a kid before you really get like real jobs. I, I don't know if this is weird. When you respect yourself enough to get a real job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if this is weird, so I'll throw this one out there, but then I'll tell you the other one. Uh, my dad working for the morning news, even though he was a contractor and he was he was responsible for the carriers. Mm. He wasn't a carrier. He managed the carriers. But even his part of the job was they had to turn in, they called them starts. He'd turn in like 40 starts a month, you know, new subscribers. Okay. And so he didn't want to go knocking on doors to get sales. So who did he enlist? Me and my brothers and my cousins and stuff. So we had to be the idiots that went knocking on doors. Oh, you want to take the Dallas Morning News? Mm. No. Yep. Now, the cool thing was we got $5 a start, hey. which in the 80s, not bad. Mm. You get four or five a night, that's 20 bucks in your pocket. Do that three or four days a week, not bad. How old were you? 13, 14. Yeah. Not bad. Not that's bad money. Cool. Not that that's weird. It was just annoying. Yeah. You know, but it taught me how to sell. I mean, yeah. I, I learned how to sell. I mean, I remember nights go out and not get anything and I'd be like, I need to learn how to sell so I can don't waste my time coming out here for no money. But uh, my mom worked for this guy. He She worked for this guy. He owned an insurance company and he also owned a snow cone stand in uh, this little dead shopping area. The only thing in the shopping area, the shopping center, was a dirty, greasy spoon coffee shop. Okay. A dollar store, seven empty buildings, and then the snow cone stand that was in an old photo mat. You remember photo mats? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. It was an old photo mat building that he converted into a snow cone stand. So it was a standalone little thing. Yeah, yeah little okay. thing. And uh, had this thing, and he'd put this big block of ice on the thing and then run it through the grinder so that the chips would in the cup Shave, do yeah. all the. Mm-hmm. And it was weird because you'd go hours with no one 
coming by. And he paid me eight bucks an hour in '86. Not wow. bad. <laughs> and you got it was years. nice and cool in that little yeah, air conditioning in this little yeah. thing. I, I could bring a radio. I was listening to Rangers games. I was a book, big book nerd. Mm-hmm. So I was reading. And I'd go hours without seeing anybody. But then you'd go like on Saturdays. I never sit down on Saturday. It was like all day long. Yeah. But that's probably the weirdest just because snow can stand really just going to sit in this, yeah. in this little booth and stuff. But and I never had like any of the real gross jobs. Like, I mean, I never, never did landscaping. I never did never anything like the, that. The floor in a porn theater or anything like no, that? No, I never did that. Okay. I sold the that's floor a in a porn theater. That's, that's a gross very gross. Job. Job. Oh, God. <laughs> God, you're gross. And you're ripping us for going. <laughs> I know, okay. right? No. <laughs> Did you have dark. some weird jobs like that? Yeah. Well, my dad, when I was 12, I wanted, you know, Levi's. My dad's like, I'm getting your Wranglers or whatever the yeah. cheap ones. You're not getting Levi's. Go get a job. Right. <laughs> so I was mowing yards and I was helping this one guy build fences and stuff. But in, I lived in New Braunfels at the time and they had Oktoberfest. So I'd go to Oktoberfest because everybody went to Oktoberfest, yeah. drank, played all the, you know, carny games and stuff like that. And I really loved the carny games and i would hang out at these games and talk to these people like for hours and the guy was like come back here let me show you how this works and he showed me how to do you know the ring toss and stuff like that and he's like yeah i want like four of these booths over here and stuff and i always need help if you want a job i'm like sweet i'm like i'm 12 he's like i don't care i'll pay you under the table i'm like awesome so i became a carny Mm -hmm. for two summers Mm -hmm. it was awesome i got to help on the the ring toss i got to help on the uh the the throwing the darts with the balloon thing and he but this is one of those guys that like that's all he did he had he had the thing at Mm oktoberfest they had several other events of the year that he would have booths at and then fourth of july he'd have the firecrack booth Mm -hmm. so i'd go help him on the firecracker booth get all kinds of free firecrackers and shit nice so that was a weird but cool job as a kid to help mm-hmm. out at yeah. that stuff and make a good amount of money. So I always got yeah. free firecrackers. I always came home with you know stuffed animals that I could give to girls and shit. And, mm-hmm. and it was amazing how cheap that stuff was. Like you'd you'd spend twenty bucks to get a freaking stuffed animal for a girl, mm-hmm. and he would get boxes of those things from China, and it was like twelve bucks for like a nice. hundred stuffed nice. animals. So those things were like pennies on the dollar. So it's a profit deal. It is a very profit. He's quoting deal. the jerk. Yeah. The jerk. <laughs> yeah. But that's what he did. He worked maybe. Four so you didn't do a travel year. You didn't do the traveling. No, carny I didn't do thing. the travel thing. My I brother just... did the traveling carny thing. Yeah. For wow. a whole summer. Yeah. He said that was wild. He lost his virginity on and the carny tour. That, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. He got paid a lot of. I'll tell you that off air. Mm. He got paid. This was probably ninety three, ninety four. Yeah. He would have been eighteen, nineteen then. Mm-hmm. He made like four grand that month, or six weeks. Six yeah. weeks of traveling with the carnival. He made like four grand over six weeks. Not even bad. Yeah. So when I'd work the booth, and of course, I'd let my friends win and stuff and get yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd slip me a beer every once in a while, like drink half a beer, be like, yay. <laughs> so that was good times when you're 12. <laughs> nice. Nice job. But, uh, okay, my first job. No, I'm, real quick, because mm. we only got a couple minutes. I'm an uncle who's about to pass, and I hate that. He's a great guy. And this is why he's a great guy. I was 15, so I didn't have to work yet. My parents were like, when you turn 16, get a job. Well, I wanted money. Mm. And I, I hated knocking on doors and getting starts for my dad. And there was a Kettle restaurant. Remember Kettle mm-hmm. restaurants? Yeah. They were kind of like a Denny's. They might still be around. They're just not around here. And uh, they were hiring for a busboy. I was like, I want to do that. My dad's like, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I want to I do that. And they're like, so I go apply. When you're not 16, your parents have to approve. My dad said, okay, I approve. I worked there two nights, and I was miserable. It was just, <laughs> I was supposed to be a bus boy. I wanted to be in the dishwasher. All I was doing was running stuff through the machine. Oh, and stuff. I've been burned, there, done that. Burned myself. Because those yeah. suckers, when they come out of that thing, the glasses are hot. And you're, yeah. Ugh. And so it was a Saturday night, and I was supposed to go to work. And my parents went over to my aunt and uncle's to hang out with my aunt and uncle's and cousins. And I was so envious, I wanted to go hang out with them. You know, because we love playing with our cousins. We have big football games and stuff. And... uh so they left, and I was supposed to go to work, and I just didn't want to do it. And so I called my, called over my aunts. This is before cell phones. Called my aunt. My dad answered, or puts my dad on the phone. I said, "Dad, I don't, I don't want to do this." And he's like, "Well, you don't have to." I said, "He says, come over." He says, "Come on over." He goes, "I'll come back. I'll come pick you up." And we'll come. I'm like, "Well, no, because I'll be embarrassed because I quit, and I don't want to look like a quitter in front of my family." And he's like. It's family. Just come on over. He goes, everyone will understand. So my uncle, who I didn't really think I was that close to. I mean, I liked him. I just yeah. didn't think he cared because he had so many nephews and stuff. And uh, about an hour into it, I'm still being embarrassed, but I'm trying to fight it off and I'm hanging out with my cousins and stuff. And we're getting ready to go outside and play football. My uncle calls me over and he says, hey, Randy, I want to talk to you for a minute. I said, okay. I'm like, fuck. 
He calls me over and he puts his arm around me and he says, I want you to know, I think it's very noble that at 15 you decided you wanted to go out there and work. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. But the fact that you showed the initiative, you should be proud of yourself. And the fact that you're embarrassed shows another reason why you should be proud of yourself. Because mm-hmm. if you think I'm looking down on you, don't. I respect you. That's cool. And it was so awesome. That meant so much to me. And I got to tell him that last year. The last time I saw him, I got that's to tell awesome. him that. So yeah. it's awesome. So That's cool. Anyway, so that's really cool. And it's going to be a sad day when he goes. But yeah. it's it's important. You know, if you're an, old, an older person and you've got younger people in your life, do things like that. Reach out to them. It really does mean a lot. I mean, it's oh, yeah. 30-something years later or 20-something years, 25-something years later. And it still means a lot to me. Yeah, it makes a difference. It does, for anyway. sure. Anyway. So what do you think of second, third? It's, uh, it's picked up on the flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Little stronger, not not much, but uh, so far I I like it. It's milder yeah. than I was expecting. I'd but say it's mild to medium at this point. I picked up uh, a lot of almond in the second third. Yeah, and uh, nuts. I didn't know what exactly. Shut sweet. up. Babe. It's sweet too. It's got a little sweetness on the yeah. on the back end there, so it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> nuts in his mouth. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this show sometimes. <laughs> so we're gonna take a little break. We'll come back for the last third of the longest cigar name ever. <laughs> All right, we're back for the last third of the longest cigar name ever. Latalier Extension. Dion de la Racine. De la Racine. E something. E hey, why don't you play another somebody does somebody yeah. rock suck? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's still very mild. I don't know if the year on it has milded it up. Milded it. Milded it up. In That's what I'm saying. In milden? In, in milded it. It milden tated. It milded it. It mildification did. It milched. <laughs> <laughs> But it's very Jeez. mild, and um, there is some definite... Um, we still can't see your stick. <laughs> ...cedar notes. For there me. it is. In the last third, I'm getting some cedar notes along That's with... That's the bionic penis we were talking about right there. <laughs> I took some notes from the cigar name that you guys are smoking and grew a bit. Is that what it is? Okay. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Well, a four-year-old could turn seven before it finished pronouncing the name of that cigar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Turn eight and be an asshole. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we were just saying eight-year-olds are the biggest assholes on the planet. Yep. Sorry, they are. Eight-year-olds suck. Yeah, my daughter's <laughs> five, so I'm not looking forward to eight. You already anything. had one that went through eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yep. what happened to your wrapper there? It it's flaking a little fun. bit. It's flaking a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, mine's fine. And the burn is, is evened up. It's nice. So I'm a, I am like the Latelier line. I really liked the regular Lataliers that came we out. We do, too, and we've asked Tom Poehler many times to come by so we can sign up for it, but Tom Poehler, for some reason, is a force field around this store where he's not allowed... To come mm. in for some reason, I guess. Interesting. Okay. And I like Tom. He's a cool dude, but doesn't come by our store. Note taken, Tom. Even when we say, we would like to order this. <laughs> it's funny. I sent Brandon Holdsworth a text yesterday. I'm like, hey, we're out of Guaycon. Call Matt. We need to order. Mm-hmm. He fucking showed up. He didn't call. He just showed up at the store. Without yeah. Guaycons. Well, true. That's yeah. A, true. yeah. Well, that's a true story. There, yeah, there's a story behind that. I'll tell you guys off mic. That's pulling back too much of the curtain because we do try to do we bother with the curtain i, I I'm, I'm i keep people secrets i'm not like chandler <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep people secrets uh and but there's something there's a reason why he couldn't bring us some glycon yesterday so, so i would cut out the last like 30 seconds of the audio here so that people don't know that there's a secret ah. people can know their secrets because this it's world's like pee- everyone thinks that Every, everything's got a conspiracy behind it anyway. Everyone already yeah. thinks that way anyway. So, so yeah, there's a great cigar so, conspiracy. So they're assume, no. So they're so people are going to assume then therefore that obviously there are secrets of the trade. Yeah, so that's all. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Because I keep people secrets. All right. Because he gets drunk and then he spills. <laughs> me. He's not drunk enough yet. <laughs> we'll get him there, but it won't be on record. No. So, Off the record, Randy. Okay, so that was the the worst, the weirdest job he, job he had as a kid. What was the coolest job he had as a kid? Uh. Okay. <laughs> it involved newspaper again. The Mesquite Daily News. <laughs> and this wound up being what I wound up doing in my career, so this was my training for it. This was calling people on the phone asking them to take the Mesquite Daily News. Mm-hmm. Mesquite's a suburb of Dallas, famous for the Mesquite Rodeo. That's about the only thing it's famous for. Yeah, that's not going to put... Use this. Use the stirrup. And, uh... Jeez. <laughs> and, uh... It was calling people, but it was... It was the same crap of asking people to take the paper and interrupting their meal and everything. I hated that part of it. Yep. But got to sit in air conditioning and have to walk upstairs at apartments and knock on doors. Yep. It was just calling. 
and they didn't care if he got one star tonight or if he got ten star tonight. You know, they yeah. didn't care. And the lady that was my boss uh, was the aunt of one of my good friends in high school. Mm -hmm. So she liked me already, and we were cool. But they would, because there was a Brahms next door, they would buy cookies, and uh, they had coffee, and, and it was real plush, and so you had snacks, and you had shit like that. And it was so easy, because it was like three bucks a month for this paper. And all you had to do was just talk up the community sense and the value and stuff. People like, yeah, it's three bucks, yeah, I'll take it. Mm. You know, so I was getting paid like five bucks an hour and three bucks a start, you know, so. That was a cool job, sitting yeah. in a chair, air conditioned, eating cookies all night. It was great. It was only from like six to nine. Yeah. So I could still do my homework. I could still get whatever I needed done. I still I could actually go to baseball practice and then go from baseball practice to work. And I get home by nine fifteen and yeah. do my homework. It was really cool. I had a, a job in uh, this is again in uh, New Braunfels. I had a job at Schlederbahn. Oh, this is that'd back be when cool. Schlederbahn was like one ride <laughs> maybe four or five rides it was the yellow and the, river. the pass through from landa park to the rest of the, the river and um i got a job there as a lifeguard mm -hmm. but the lifeguard jobs were not like regular lifeguard you couldn't you weren't just working in sleaterbond as a lifeguard you also had to do you'd work the concession stand you'd work mm -hmm. so you had like whatever your station was that day mm -hmm. is the station you worked at mm -hmm. and the worst one was when you had to work the parking lot because it was hot as balls. You're out there sweating your ass off, just directing traffic and stuff. It was fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, but the coolest part of that was working as the um, as the lifeguard, and I saw lots of boobies. Nice. Yeah, because everybody wanted to work that one ride where it was like a really steep slope, and at the end of it, you hit real hard, and all the girls would get up, and their tops would be gone. <laughs> and it was greatness. Awesome. So that was my favorite. That's a good job. My favorite That's a good job. job. I got to save a couple lives too, which was nice. Really? So, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, I saved one kid in the little in the waiting pool because mm -hmm. he was like underage and he was just like, you know, he was like probably four or five and he's like jumping around. It was one of those like pools that kind of goes in, you know, that you don't really know it's deep until it's deep. Mm -hmm. He fell back and like all I saw was his feet near and I was like, crap. I jumped off the thing and grabbed him, <laughs> picked him up. His mom was like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> so that was cool. And then the second one I saved was some kid was like, hanging out near uh they had the rope swing that you would just jump into the river and do all kinds of flips and crap and mm -hmm. whatever and he was just playing over by the rope swing and i saw him like going over to where people would because most people wouldn't pick their legs up they would just you know basically go and just fall into the water yeah and um he was right there in the kill zone basically where he would get his ass kicked in the head mm -hmm. and kicked into the water and i just like tackled him and yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> kept him from getting and it was the reaction from his mom wasn't the one i was wanting because mm -hmm. he was like oh my god what did you do to my kid i'm like he would have got kicked in the head. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, but yeah. Well, I saved a life once okay. in, in a pool. It was at Whitewater that be, then became wet and wild. Mm. Now it's Hurricane Harbor. But anyway, uh, actually, this Whitewater is gone. Mm. And it's uh, it was in the wave pool. And the wave pool would be mellow. And then they'd kick in the waves. And it was like 10 minutes off, 10 minutes yeah. on and stuff. And so we were swimming right at the edge, you know, right at the far end where the waves first start when it was calm and we're swimming this was a dare to swim there and so i'm swimming in this area all of a sudden the waves kick in and they were mega right there at that i mean they kick out with a force mm -hmm. and uh so i'm like swimming real fast to get to the to get to the ladder i, I didn't want any part of this and so i get to the ladder and i look and there was like this nine-year-old kid and he's flailing mm -hmm. he was why his parents would let him get that close to that part of the thing was ridiculous and i'm looking around and there's nobody around him and this kid is freaking out and I'm like, didn't even think. It's just jump. And I just jumped in, and I'm like fighting. I mean, this thing's waves are like taking me up. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to get there in time. I'm not going to get there in time. And I got over to him, and I finally, I'm like, grab my hand. Which is, some comedian says, how often in your life do you ever say, yeah. grab my hand? Right. It's for Arnold. Grab my hand. Grab my hand. <laughs> do like, it now. I like, grab my hand. Grab my hand. And he grabbed my hand, and I pulled him. Did you say, grab my hand if you want to live? <laughs> I wanted to. Uh -huh. I was like, really cool. grab my hand and kick your feet. That's all I said. I said, grab my hand and kick your feet. And so I'm grabbing, so we're going, and man, it's just rocking us. And I'm thinking, this kid's going to be dead by the time I get him to the, to the ladder. So I get him to the ladder, and he's like green or blue, actually, but he's breathing. And I'm like, can you climb the ladder? Can you climb the ladder? And he's not, he's unresponsive. So I like picked him up and just like threw him on the, mm. on the side part. And I climbed up, and I'm waving at a lifeguard. Fucking lifeguard's not paying any attention. I'm the one doing all this work. Yeah. And it's like, I'm like 16 in this lifeguard. And I'm like, this kid needs help. This kid needs help. 
oh man, I didn't see it. I'm sorry, what happened? And I tell him the story. He's like, oh, they, just, like, they did the CPR and they pumped. And I'd seen it in movies and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, they're pumping the water's like pumping out of his chest. It was freaky. It freaked yeah. me out. Yeah, that's weird stuff. Man. It is weird, man. It is weird stuff. So that's the only time I ever saved a person's life. That's cool. Yeah. The only time, like, like that happens frequently for everyone. It happens for some people. Yeah. Jack Bauer all the time, man. All the time. <laughs> Every episode, at least one or two people. Jack Bauer. Saving he kills like two, that. he saves two. Yeah, it's, 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 he leaves it out. It it out. Yeah. That's awesome. They need to have, they showed the list of my people he killed. They didn't show how many people he saved. Yeah, exactly. have that list on there. Right. Well, Saint Bauer that should be called. <laughs> the people of the United States. Yeah. Exactly. The whole country. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. The whole country. Every fucking Exactly. Country. God bless yep. Jack Bauer. How many times did he save the world? A lot more a lot. than John McClane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a lot more. Which Die Hard 24-7 still needs to happen. It's got to happen. It still needs okay, to happen. Okay, if I win like a big lottery, like a three or 400 million lottery, I'll make that happen. I'll, I'll put all my money and make it. Like, hey, Bruce. Kiefer, let's movie. make this happen. Yep. We'll do it independently and still it'll make money. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. you kidding me? There'll be so many people going to see yeah. that movie. It's crazy. Fuck yeah. And you got to bring back Hans Gruber. It's like his twin oh, brother. Yeah. Got to bring back him. And who would twenty four? Oh, got to bring back President. Uh, what was his name? Gregory Itzen's character. What's oh, president? president? Asshole. He was an asshole. <laughs> because you know when they ended it, yeah, he got shot. It looked like he was dead. But the last thing they saw, you saw his hand move or something, and you're like, he's not dead. Yeah. So yeah, bring him back. Yeah. He was the worst. He was. He was. God, the worst. That was a slime ball. You know, he was on Friends a couple of times. He was a. Uh, Paul Rudd's dad mm-hmm. and friends, mm-hmm. and he's supposed to be funny. And I'm like, look at him, like, I hate you, you yeah, son I of hate a that bitch. Guy. <laughs> he's the worst American president ever. Ever. <laughs> Worse than Obama, maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> <I'm joking>. maybe. <laughs> Just joking. We no, joke not. on this show. <laughs> we tell jokes. That's what we do. Okay, well, There's what do you think of the. On your head. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be the first time <laughs> or the last. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You got to worry in this country is when it's right here. Mm hmm. Because they'll shoot you. Uh, thanks for clarification. Yeah, that's what he meant. Not your own somewhere totally different. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> horrible. No, yeah, that's like a kill shot right there. And so Abraham Lincoln <laughs> said, "If you are a racist, I will attack you with the North." <laughs> <laughs> that's another great Michael Scott quote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tasty smoke. Um, not really what I expected. The the regular Latelier's got a little more kick. Mine to it. started flaking a, a little bit, but that happens. <laughs> a little bit. But yeah, it's apart. falling apart. I'm being it's generous. Apart, yes. I'm being generous. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of he's smoking. A, he's smoking the uh, binder and the filler at this point. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, I think I'm sitting right under the air conditioning. I think that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, but I like it. It's good. I still like the regular Latelier a little better. I think, um, and the Latelier Maduro 44 is awesome. That's mm-hmm. my favorite of the line so far. So. I mean, you know, we like the Corona stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Those are fantastic. We'll review one of those eventually, I think. Okay. So I've right. got a couple, I believe. So, as always, check us out at all the normal places you can find us. iTunes, Podomatic, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Facebook. Podomatic, Pod- Podcast Land, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And if you don't know where we are, you're not looking for us. All you got to do right. is Google Calypso Cigar, and it's all over the place. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Or you even look up Cigar Review Podcast, and we're like the first five on Google. Yep. So, yeah. Because we rule. Because we rock. We're badass. Hardcore. So, we'll see you next time, guys. It's not, <laughs> you're not going to change, your, I mean, you're going to change your closeout line? What? Your closeout it's line? been great smoking with you. See you later, Brandon and Nate. See you later, Randy and the Latelier Racine de la Extension 12, 13, 45, 5, 8, 7, 17, 6 to, 19, 40, 6 to 1. Pi, carry the one, minus R. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao.